Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Talk of the Town with me, Lynn Positin, also known as Lynn About Town. And I am here with a very, very good friend and some Christmas cheer. First of all, I want to welcome everyone who's tuned into the podcast uh, on the internet and also for those who are tuned in on the radio and for my wonderful, devoted Facebook friends, thank you for tuning in as well. We try to keep it like a TV show at the same time being a radio show, so <laughs> just grab it all. So I am here today uh, on behalf of Consumer Energy Solutions, which is the company I work for in Clearwater. And we put this show together so that we bring good news, good events, and good people to the good people that listen so that they see that, one, it's not all bad news. Mm -hmm. Like when you tune into the main networks, you see a lot of strife and upset. And so we thought on drive time, driving home, wouldn't it be nice to just hear about good things? That's why we have the show. So today, I have a really good local guy. And I'm going to sing his praises a little bit. His name is O'Neill Larkin. And for anyone in Clearwater with a uh, knowledge of the city, uh, O'Neill is a household name because he's been here a long time. How long, O'Neill, have you lived in Clearwater? Well, basically off and on all my life. You know, and that's, I just put the seven, eight years together, you know, but I lived in Philadelphia as well. All right. Yeah. Well, he's a Clearwater, definitely guy. He's seen a lot of changes here. He was just telling me the area uh, that he lives, which is just up the street, yeah. literally up this street, Myrtle Avenue, um, used to be called the Grove because right. there were so many fruit, fruit trees. So he had everything, huh? Everything. You name it, it, it was here. It was really here, you know. But development, you know, we, you always lose in development. You so. do. You just remember the past, like everything else that go away. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm here 14 years, and, and just my three places where I would go that were groves, you know, Orange Blossom Grove on yeah, 19, I remember, gone. I remember. It. Uh, the one uh, in Palm Harbor or Dunedin, that one there is gone now. So, yeah, it's kind of sad. We were talking, I have uh, papaya trees. We, did, we started composting, mm -hmm. and my daughter's a big fruit fan, so she starts eating all these papayas and they're sprouting up and now I have without without exaggeration the tree is 25 feet high oh yeah they grow fast and they grow really fast I think it's only eight months old yeah. and I probably have 20 papayas on there if I have one so it's pretty cool anyway we are not here to talk about papayas but I want to tell you a little bit about O'Neill so O'Neill uh, and I met doing a golf tournament for the MLK Neighborhood Center Coalition, which is 1201 Douglas Avenue. Give it a little plug. 1201 Douglas Avenue in Clearwater. And that building provides a home for different programs for children and the youth in the North Greenwood community. And basically, it's a home base for a lot of goodness. And so when uh, I was asked to help O'Neill, and uh, Anthony, who was running the center, um, to put on a you know Freedom Swing golf tournament. Uh, my boss said, Lynn, help them out. So we're in our third year, and it's doing really, really well. And uh, through that, I you know became friends with O'Neill. O'Neill, what would you say makes you keep going? What what benefit do you see that makes you always helping in the community? Well, you know. I I guess when you look around and you see various things and you just make yourself involved, my weakness is children. Mm. I always have been. Uh, you see things in your community that you know can be better than what it is, not that you've taken that much pride over other people. But I just looked at something when I retired in 98 and growing up with a bunch of guys older than me, and we started playing golf. Uh, from where we went from Sandlot Golf, couldn't play on public golf courses. Big change. So we made a big change, and uh, I remember years ago, we used to play at Alco or Rogers Park, and then when things opened up with uh, integration, we all learned to be very competitive. And I must say with no brag, we became some pretty tough golfers. <laughs> so um, when I retired in 98, uh, I just, pull the guys together at a golf event we was to. I said, we need to put back in the neighborhood. 
Mm. All of us retired. It looked like most of us went to work for the city, state, and the county. Most of us were military veterans. And uh, our friendship just grew to the point. And I remember one of the gentlemen say, what we're going to do? I said, I don't know. We're going to do something. <laughs> so I remember he's, he's deceased. I just spoke at his funeral, my close friend, a few months ago. He said, well, whatever you do, do it. You know we're going to follow you anyway. You know, for some reason, it looked like I was always the one who initiated the ideas. Mm -hmm. so that talk, does not surprise me. Yeah, well, I was talking with my wife. You know, I wanted to uh, do a Thanksgiving basket for what I thought was a needed family, okay. the group. And Nitra said to me, how do you know people want something or need something? Thanksgiving, everybody got something, you know. So she said, well, you listen, I cook, you cook. I'm quite sure all the wives and girlfriends or friends cook. All the golfer people. All the golfer people. Why don't you guys just cook up some food and, and Neil, you're going to do it the way you want it anyway. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and just put it outside. So we did. I remember when we put three tables out on, on a Sunday, and we served... 84 people, and I was 2,000, and I really thought we had reached Mount Everett. I'm really serious. Yeah. And uh, we gave out a food so quick, but we did what we started to do. So the next year... So that was in the year 2000, so you've been doing it 18 years. 18 years. years. And yeah. we just had this, by the way, at Thanksgiving, yeah, 18, so... 18 years. And yeah. The next year, we, like, added up a little bit. We putting all this money in out of our pockets, girlfriends, and whatever. But anyway, um, we gave out a food look like maybe a hundred people, and people who don't re believe in miracles, I've seen it that mm -hmm. particular Sunday. Uh, it was out of food, and people was coming in. Uh, Hasseback pulled up, and the guy asked who was in charge. And my buddy, who I spoke of at his family recently, he said Neil. Mm -hmm. So the guy said, I have something for you. And he opened his house back, and out of the back were just loaded with uh, deluxe hamburgers and fries. No kidding. I'm really serious. So we started giving them out, but my wife came out. She said, no, no, there's too many people. Let's cut them in half and divide the fries. <laughs> That's okay. a mom for you. <laughs> so we wound up doing 124 people out of what was given to us. So the next, before the guy left, I said, who sent this? And the guy said, Mr. O'Keefe at oh. O'Keefe Restaurant. So that morning, I couldn't wait to go down and thank him because that's what I do. If you donate to me or do something, yeah. when I put everything in place, then I spend the rest of the week saying thanks. Yeah. You know, let people, I'm not one to receive and not give thanks about it, you know, unless you know how much I appreciate it. But anyway, I went down and... Uh, they lady met me at the door. I said, well, I'd like to see who's in charge. She said, I am. Uh -huh. So she asked me, could I help? I said, yes, I'm here to say thanks for the, the deluxe burgers and fries. She said, my husband, the light caught us. Well, you know where the light is? Yes. And so he looked over and said, somebody's doing something good. He went back and closed the door. Look at down. that. See, that's how it spreads. So, you know, to me... Uh, I took that as a reward. Sure. So I went forward more and more, and then I went out and I started not soliciting, but asking the local businesses right. to help us because I knew it was going to grow. You yeah. Know? And I think uh, in 2000, the largest number we ever had was uh, 1,600. Wow. So from 80, the first year, to 1,600. Yeah. And uh, every year we talked pretty close to a thousand people, but it's because I do believe in what God allowed me to put my energy into doing. Because I truly, I, I just uh, enjoy it. Just to, and, and then when you do something like that and it grow with the help of the city and business, and then you, I invite everybody. If you give me ten cent, I say, hey. You Coming. Yeah, I want you to see and we were there. We were there. My yeah. husband served on the line. I was going to, but then I got busy doing something else. And O'Neill just brings people up and gives you a medal. And I mean, obviously, you don't do it for that, but just well, the it's war, very sweet. The war started ten years ago to Sunday, and a friend of mine, a close friend, uh, attempt suicide. Oh, he came to my house, and and I knew. He was in a bad way, yeah. So I, I, he took off heading to the bridge, and 
I, uh, I took off to his family home, and I met an officer, and I told him I was in trouble, I needed some help, I think my friend's going to commit suicide. Mm. I was going to the family, I told him where I thought he was going. And when I got there, Officer O'Brien, Clearwater Police Department, was on his knees talking with Sam. Mm. He was crying, Sam yeah. was crying, I started crying, you wow. know. But when I went back, I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to give this man an award or something. So I went to Beehive and, and, and I purchased a little trophy. That's how the award ceremony got started. And every year, like this year, I think I gave out. I had the pleasure of meeting him at um, oh, thank right. Thanksgiving. Yes. Yeah, what a lovely guy. He walked up and told me uh, Sunday, he said, I told you I'd be here, and it's been 10 years to the day. Yeah. So to do that and honor people, uh, give back. You, you give back in life. And see, my problem is I can't find no criticism in people. Yeah. To me, if my dad told me when I was young, he said, you know, if you respect the man, you don't give him but one choice. He respect you as well. That's right. So my life is really on the respectability. Uh, but I'm just, uh, I guess the word is a soft-hearted person for kids and elderly. You know? Yes. And that's what my life is. Uh, well, I you do live it, and I yeah, and I yeah. and I'm telling you, from the moment I met him, it's just it's nothing but pure sweetness, and doesn't mean he can't give you a little sass, but well, you, you <laughs> know, you have to keep your manhood. <laughs> you know, That's right. So you just That's right. Crawl I just I don't want I don't want anyone thinking you're just like this big mush. He's a smart man, you know. Yeah, but, but you know, he, I met some people um, that I truly love. I don't know no one who thrilled me more than, than, than Pat Harden. Pat yeah. Harden, uh, I can't say she came to my rescue, but Pat Harden did something that I would always respect her and love her regardless. Mm -hmm. You know, she makes sure that I have advice from the kids, uh, just a well with the first guy, you know, that. I always wanted bikes. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of people say, Neil, I'm give you two bikes years ago, but I wouldn't accept them. Mm. Because I had friends who worked hard as I did. Right. And they had kids. So I didn't want to give you a bike. Right. Friend, and then I don't have nothing to give them. Keep my the other, other ones out. So right. I just tell them, say, you know, just I would, but, you know, animosity is a bad thing. Yeah. So to keep the level grounds together, you stay level. That's right. It's a smart thing because, you know, you yeah. don't even know that it's going to turn that on in someone and it does and kids kids don't have the capacity sometimes to reason through it all they just get jealous for lack of a better word or they feel put out well i think we we as humans and i'm putting myself in the same category maybe on a different standard i don't be great mm -hmm. your, your belief is yours mm -hmm. you know i mm -hmm. have to respect your belief and and everybody tell you that's the way i am yes but I think in life, in order to accomplish something, and I'm not bragging about what I have helped mm -hmm. become, mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing, you have to have your faith in God. I mm -hmm. just don't think nothing will materialize in life if you don't take the time to pray and, um, you know, and ask for things. But at the same time, regardless of what your belief is, I'm going to respect it. Mm -hmm. And this is why when I call Pat, I call Cree, I call um, Dylan. Um, there's so many people in the organization of, of Scientology who I cannot find any type of hardship regards to what people say. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. my, my goal in life is helping. Yeah. I'm not going to take your cane. So you're you not going to see see someone who's helping and say it's something else. You know no, what it you is. Know, I'm not going to take your cane from you if you cripple. Yeah. I'm going to help you get along. Yeah. But why would I take it if I don't need it? Right. And I live that way. And you do. You're a beautiful way, man. You know. I'm, you're a beautiful man. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Pat Harney works for the Church of Scientology. That's who O'Neill is talking about. And she uh, has come to his aid when he's doing this big Christmas thing, which is what we're going to talk about now. And she has provided, uh, and just as a surprise to him, got a bunch of bikes so that he could provide them at his uh, giveaway. So uh, with that, we're going to talk about that because we are going to run out of time quicker than it can be said. So 
O'Neill and his beautiful wife, Nidra, does a, an event, on, and this year it's taking place on December 16th from 3 to 5 p.m. at his home on 602 Marshall Street in Clearwater. And it's going to be fun and food and holiday treats because Santa is coming to town. Yes, he is. And uh, for those of you who might want to help, let me talk about the help part first, because you've already heard what an amazing helper this man is and what he believes comes back to you when you help. So if you are so inclined, he will accept toys and gifts from ages 1 to 12 years old. Gift cards. He'll take candy canes and wrapped candy, hot dogs and hot dog buns, cookies for decorating. They're going to have a table set up where they're going to put frosting and and sprinkles. If you want to donate the frosting and sprinkles, we'll take it. Individual bags of chips. You know, you can go to Costco, get those chips, all the different mixes. We'll take those. Scotch tape, wrapping paper, kids drinks, and water. All that is going to be there. And we're not doing a whole meal for the community, but we want the kids to be able to come and get a treat and enjoy this lovely day. And pictures with Santa. And pictures with Santa. That's right. So, um, Consumer Energy Solutions has taken on, instead of our toys for Toys for Tots, I told O'Neill this year that we we're going to put two huge boxes together, we always do, with the donations of our wonderful staff, and we're going to bring those toys to you. So I will arrange with you when to bring them. And now you want the toys unwrapped, correct? Yes, because it's, it's a group that my wife has for okay. years. They take Saturday morning from 8 o'clock. I've seen them all day wrapping gifts. Okay. So last year, the substation was under repair. So okay. uh, Anthony welcomed into the room. And, and In they, the center. Yeah, so, you know, I, I'm honored with that. And they're looking forward to it again. Me, myself, I wouldn't wrap a gift. <laughs> I'm just telling you about me. You know, what? Oh, but this way they can tell like what it is, and then well, they'll they put it in the categories. Girl, Perfect. What, what? So yeah, then, still so good. They do a good job, I must say. I, you know, let me clear something here. Thanksgiving w w is mine. Yes. My wife started Christmas by we had a Christmas party to the house twenty years ago, and we had these gift bags left. You understand? So yeah. the kids start coming by the sidewalk, but how? She said, "You want a gift bag, Christmas." So the next year, her idea hit again. We went around the neighborhood taking fruit off people's trees and putting them <laughs> in the gift bags. And so they started making gift bags. So the next year, she said, why don't you go on the front in the morning and when the cars come by, put on a Santa suit and oh, give cute. out some candy canes. So uh, Martha Skelton, the director of 40 years with Community Prize, she said, why don't you do Santa for the kids at Community Pride. So I did it for years for the kids at Community Pride. And at the same time, our Christmas evolved to what it is now. But yeah. the, I kind of stay out the way. I make sure she have everything she wants, the toys or whatever I can do, set up the stage and this. But Christmas is, is her thing. You know, and Thanksgiving is mine, so she helped me, I help her. That sounds work, like a good you know. union, for sure. Yeah. Well, we're going to help you with the toys. We're going to do something a little extra special. We're going to be providing actual tutoring, which, by the way, today is Give Day, Giving Tuesday Day, and our Community Learning Center is accepting donations. So please look on my Facebook page for the Give Day Tuesday today and any donation you can make you would be helping the Community Learning Center who's been tutoring the neighborhood kids and beyond uh, regardless of their income they don't turn people away they have free homework days and so what my boss Patrick Cloudin wanted to do is he we're doing the toys but he wanted to create uh, a gift of learning and a gift of you know as a mom if my kid is struggling I can't think of a better gift than someone to help me get him out of his struggles. Now, if we give you these certificates, I'm going to come that day and help Nidra with whatever she needs, but um, we're going to be giving you some 10-hour blocks of tutoring for these kids, that for the parents, if they want that. Well, I think we talked about that, and, you know, I, I call myself a man of vision. You know, I, I, I don't do anything unless I visualize and feel comfortable, and it's the correct way to do it. I, I just the way my life is. And uh, I think nothing would be more better. You know, you 
put these type gifts and things on uh, toys, I think that's the worst thing. I think give them to the parents. Give them to the parents. Yep. And I think the best stage for that, if it has an elf, even one of the, okay. the older kids out the neighborhood, be an elf. Get with you. And when they come up to take pictures with Santa, give it to the parents. Beautiful. Because if you put Good it plan. on a gift wrap, it, no, no, no. We're not going to do that. So, we're going to just create a certificate so it's real clear and the, and make it real clear for the parents to do. Right. We are almost out of time. So yes. what can we what can we tell people? Do you want volunteers to help? Do you want well, anything I, more? You know, Christmas is when Nidra, uh, school staff, or people. So she has that all covered. That covered. Good. They, it's all covered. They like uh, like Miss Heather. This is their event. She went out and bought a brand new Mercedes band three years ago just to bring me in. in her oh. brand new Mercedes. So every year I come in something different. I've been in on, on uh, motorcycles. I come in on a, a bass boat. Oh, how apartment. cute. So this year, uh, I really don't know how I'm coming in. Huh? So, but I show up. Something exciting. Some, yeah, they, and, the, and the kids be out there. So, so but before I yeah. tell you about, let me, can I give out a thanks? Sure. I, I want to thank sure. uh, your husband. Oh. I had a ball with him on the golf course. And to see him there supporting what we do, uh, as well as you, and well as the organization of Pat, and some people that I met, I just want to say um, it's an honor to me when I meet people in events where they are helping other people groups mm -hmm. that they can show up for my I just love to say thanks oh well we love hearing it and yep. we're, we're really happy to help you because I do believe that when you flow power or energy to someone who is of goodness and also is doing that then you multiply the force of the good it's it's a no-brainer as they right. say well, really you, you know other people to look at it and want to be a part of it that's right. It's as simple as that. That's right. You know. And good will gravitate toward good, I think. 95% of the time. That's right. That's right. Well, we will take it. Well, we are almost out of time, so I want to repeat the date. December 16th, 2018, 3 to 5 p.m., Fun Food Holiday Treats at 602 Marshall Street in Clearwater. O'Neill and Nidra, if you, O'Neill was saying, if you, if you want to drop anything off at the house, you can do that. Uh, you can reach Nidra with her email. It's N-E-D-R-A-L, as in Lynn, at Verizon.net. That's N-E-D-R-A-L at Verizon.net. And uh, O'Neill's number is 447-6287. 447-6287. I can be reached on my cell. Much easier on 727-742-6287. Uh, 742-6287. Yeah. 742-6287 is how you get Mr. Wonderful. So only good news. Oh, and O'Neill wanted to talk about one other thing with his community golfers. That on December 8th uh, in 9.15 p.m. a.m., sorry, um, they're going to have a Tarpons Wood Golf Club golf tournament. And it's a golfing event, an annual Toys for Kids event. Golfers must bring a toy. Um, and it is, you can reach O'Neill about that, 742-6278 or Art Wright at 417-8583. And that will be on December 8th. So if you want to golf, that's a fun one as well. And one last thing, Saturday morning, community cleanup. We're having a record-breaking community cleanup. We're meeting at the MLK yeah. Center. The dress codes work closed. Please come. There's going to be a barbecue after that you're given, a breakfast before. It's going to be wonderful. We're going to have hundreds of people there. So uh, with that, you can just come to 1201 Douglas Avenue in Clearwater. I will be there. We'll have a big crew there. And like I said, they, you know, we're going to clean up the neighborhood and start off the Christmas Christmas season with a nice clean neighborhood and a clean slate. It always uplifts the spirits, doesn't it? Always, always. I'm, I'm going to participate in that. All right. Well, and, we'll see uh, you Saturday morning. Yeah. It's happening quick. I don't know how they want to my <laughs> <laughs> You're a star. Well, everyone, goodbye. It's over. And uh, thank you for joining in. And O'Neill, tell you people to do the right thing and the and, good thing. And look forward to some help of you. And most of all, be safe. Be safe, everybody. Be happy. And be nice.